Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Today, if you can't already tell, it's going to be another unboxing slash haul video. I got a few packages over the last few weeks from Right Stuff Anime, Good Smile Company, CD Japan, Amazon Japan, and some other independent sellers. So I'm really excited to show you guys what I got. And yeah, it's going to be a fun manga anime merch unboxing video. So yeah, without further ado, let's hop into the very first box. Alright, so the first package I'm going to unbox today is from a small business I am a big fan of, which is Nadia's Pin Patch. And she has this really cute uh, Pochako sticker. I bought various pins from her before. She did this like crossover Sanrio and Tokyo Revengers pin series that I am a part of. And all the pins so far has been really high quality and very cute. But this one is actually not a pin but more of something very different. It is an anime plushie. Oh my god, so cute. Oh, it's actually open. But I think there's something else in here. Yes, so this, if you guys don't recognize, is a character from Snow White with Red Hair. It's our main female character, Shiryuki. So this is like the outfit she is currently wearing. I love it. So fluffy. I believe she's 20 centimeters. But yeah, I think it looks so adorable. So this is like one of the outfits that she comes with. And then she has like this little pants as well. Oh my god, this is my very first shoujo plush that I ever bought. And she turned out nice. And she also has like, the second pair of clothes as well. It also comes with this stickers so maybe we can show you guys so yeah it comes with a really cute sticker of shiryuki eating an apple very cute and then here is her second pair of outfit it's like a hat and then a dress as well but yeah this is so adorable she's also i believe making a plush of Zen as well as Obi in the future, so I'll definitely be collecting them whenever those pre-orders come out. But yeah, that is everything for Nadia's pin patch. Oh my god, it's so cute and I can't wait to display this on my shelf. Moving on, I am now opening this package from Amazon Japan. I bought tons of miscellaneous stuff for this order, but I've been a big fan of Amazon Japan lately because their shipping price is pretty nice if you buy in bulk. And yeah, they don't charge until everything is shipped out, so you can buy like in stock and pre-orders and take advantage of the lower yen to USD exchange rate if you do live in the US. But yeah, I am... So excited to show you guys what I got because I've been hoarding this order for so long. Like there's just so many items that I've been wanting to get um, that just have not had the time to place the order. But here it is. Okay, so the first few items I do want to show are some manga magazines I recently bought. And I actually never considered buying any manga magazines mainly because... Um, they come out every week in Japan and they're all in Japanese anyways and they're very bulky however after my friend bought me my very first one for the Young Jump magazine with Kaguya and Oshinoko I I was very tempted to buy them and so I did and they're actually very cheap um, at least right now in the exchange rate between the USD and the yen it's very very low and so I think they're about 300 yen each so equivalent to about two dollars at the most and since I was already buying stuff anyways I added them to my cart and the shipping did not even change at all so um it ended up being a nice deal so I did pick up um one weekly shonen jump magazine as well as two from the Hane to Yume shoujo line so yeah so I'll show you guys the one from the Weekly Shonen Jump first. And yeah, we just have beautiful Akane on the cover with the other characters. Um, and yeah, so you guys various uh, series in here. The another series I'm reading on a weekly basis is uh, Blue Box is another one. There's also like Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, Mashley, and some other series. I don't read too many Shonen Jump weekly shonen jump series as of right now but there's a lot and so 
yeah, very cool. And then the back cover is an advertisement of Genshin. And then here's the spine as well. We have Akane on the spine. So yeah, um, for Akane Banshi specifically, uh, it is about a girl who learns the art of Rakugu, which is like a one-person performance, kind of like a one-person show. And they perform like different Japanese literature in front of the audience. But yeah, this is Akane Banashi and I'm looking forward to seeing the development of Akane and all the other characters she meets in her journey to becoming a Rakoku professional, hopefully. So yeah, that is that. My very first weekly Shonen Jump magazine cover. So it's very exciting. All right, so the next two magazines I got is from the same series that I have been a big fan of. So its English name is Love Me Before You Die, also known as Suraku, JK to Haijin Kiyoshi. I got the covers that has been released for the series so far for the year, and I think they're just so pretty. We have, of course, our main leads, Jin and Mikoto. They look so pretty, especially this one too, which is like kind of like a different outfit compared to what they would usually wear. But yeah, I just saw this and I was like, you know, it's so cheap and they come with like bonuses. So I just had to get them. So if you guys don't know about this series, just wanted to give like a brief synopsis. So it starts out with a girl named Mikoto and she is at the rooftop of her high school where she plans to jump off her school rooftop because she had confessed to a classmate and he rejected her. So she's now embarrassed. Um, but in comes her teacher and he somehow convinces convinces her to not jump off the rooftop and it's kind of this like dark comedy like dark humor comedy series they talk a lot about life and death and mental health and all that stuff and i really love their chemistry and the different types of relationship that are shown in this series as well i always look forward to it whenever a new chapter comes out but yeah i'm currently collecting the series in japanese and maybe hopefully one day see it physically in english but i don't have hopes for it <laughs> anyways so the back cover is of course skip beat it's another series published by Hanayume magazine as well. So we have Kyoto and Ren and they look so good too. And then the spine, very cool. But yeah, just a whole bunch of different series in this magazine. Just lots of really pretty shoujo series. So yeah, I don't know. I don't read too many of these series in here. We have like Sacrificial Princess and the Beast which just ended recently, and then Skip Beat, of course. And yeah, just some other ones as well that I can't really recognize as I skim through this, but yes. Um, what's really cool about this magazine, it comes with freebie. So the freebie for this magazine comes with this little fan picket. So we have this character here. Yeah, I don't really know this guy too well, but we do have Ren from Skip Beat on the back, which is really cool. I love little freebies like this. And then of course we have our second cover here, which is issue number 18. And it's just them wearing these really cool modern outfits or not modern, like old outfits, I don't know. And here is the back, seems to be like a Nintendo game advertisement instead of another series. But yeah, I just think this is so cool. We have more Sacrificial Princess and the Beast. And then of course, Love Me Before You Die. Um, yeah, just skip beat. I feel like those are just titles I can like instantly recognize, but I'm pretty sure there are other series here that I probably read. Oh, I think Yon of the Dawn is in here as well somewhere. But yeah, and then here's the spine of the series as well. Very cute. And yeah. And then the freebie for this magazine cover is this one so this comes with like illustration posters which is so cool because i think that's like such a nice freebie for these magazines which is already really cheap so here it is so we have like the front cover of the magazine and then these just additional beautiful illustrations 
Got some horizontal along with vertical illustration. Wow, and they're like pretty nice quality too. Like very thick paper. And these illustrations are just so beautiful. I love the mangaka. She has like a few other series as well. Um, also not really officially translated in English or unofficially translated. So it is very hard to read them. So I'm really glad that I have the opportunity to read this series unofficially in English. But I do sometimes read Chinese scans as well, depending on access. <laughs> so yeah, wow, this comes with so many illustrations. Look at Jin, he's so, he's very handsome. But yeah, just... Wow, this is a really cool freebie that comes with so many different scenes and illustrations. Wow. Ooh, this is so pretty with like all the doves. Yep, and back to the start. So yeah, that is all the shoujo and shonen magazines I got. Also, I did pick up this newest volume for the series as well, volume 14. There was no limited edition for this volume because I think they just released one from the last one, which came with like a mini illustration book. And this is why I do really like collecting other languages because other languages tend to do like limited edition that comes with like really cool freebies, not in America where they just come with like maybe different covers at most of the time, but yeah. So I do want to support the mangaka uh, wherever, however I can. And so yeah. That is the newest volume I always picked up as well. So yeah, let's look at all the other items that I got. All right, so here are the illustration books that I got from my Amazon Japan haul. First we have is Love of Kill, which is a spy assassin romance series with a bit of action, mystery involved as well. And I have thoroughly enjoyed this series, currently reading the manga, and I watched the anime with my friend back when it aired last year. So I'm really glad to be able to get this illustration book, Song Rangha, and then we have Chateau, the female lead. Oh my god, the art for the series is just incredible. I'll just do like a very brief flip through. It has a little booklet as well, but I love the art for the series. And I cannot wait to get my <laughs> Song Rangha Nendoroid. Hopefully he's really soon. I can't remember when he's supposed to come out. So yeah, that is the Love of Kill illustration book. And the next three illustration books are from the same series. Uh, if you guys don't know, I've talked about the series quite a lot, which is Teasing Master Tagaki-san. We have, of course, our main leads, Tagaki and Nishitaka. So I did get the three illustration books that is for the series. Each of them are from the three different seasons, so season one, two, and three. Uh, unfortunately, I did such a bad job opening the box that my knife cut through the illustration booklet. Like, I'm so dumb. But at the same time, usually there's like bubble wrap, but I guess Amazon Japan doesn't really care. They did not do any protection whatsoever, just like a plastic bag, so whatever. Anyways, I'll do a quick flip through of these illustration book as well. But yeah, Teasing Master Tagaki sounds like a slice of life romantic comedy series about two middle schoolers that obviously have some feelings for each other, but likes to make bets and tease each other. Um, and they do like really funny shenanigans along the way. There's a whole bunch of interesting characters that follows. Um, they're just yeah, middle school daily life. So yeah, that is the first season. And then here's the second season, I think. So yeah, this is the cover. So here, I'll just show you guys the cover here. And then the back. I love this manga so much. And I, I'm pretty sure there's no more anime coming out since they just released the anime for Ayumu, which is like another series that the mangaka has done is currently working on. Ooh, it comes with Tagaki stickers. Very cute. And then, yeah, we have some more illustrations as well. 
And yeah, I think these are some of his other series. I don't really read too many other series. Just Ayumu and Tagaki-san for now. And then I think this is like the TV animation guide. So this is a little bit different. Not really an illustration. But yeah, lots of like different facts and sceneries and information. So yeah, it is a little bit different from like the first one where it's like just mainly some more sketches and stuff like that so yep that is the second season and then the third season is right here so we have this really adorable purple cover the back and then i think you can also uh, take this out as well so yeah we have the animation guide and then the illustration so i'll just do the illustration first season three just really cute. The series puts a smile to my face. Yeah, I found the series so adorable. And then this is the animation guide. And yep. Just lots of interesting facts. And some illustration as well. Anyways, yeah, that is Takaki-san. Um, various animation guides and illustration books. I'm really happy to be able to share you guys all of these and yeah let's hop on to the next items last but not least we have this really cute nindroid i've been wanting for so long and it is oikawa's school uniform version oh my god this has been on my nindroid grail list for so long and look how it's like it's little two little peace signs uh, I really didn't think they would re-release this because I thought like the school uniform ones are like limited edition but very lucky that they finally announced this version and so I'm really excited to assemble him and put it on my Haikyuu shelf. Also, I do hope that they release the tracksuit uniform of Kageyama someday in the future because that is like the one last Nindoroi I need for my Haikyuu collection. Um, in addition to any new ones they release for Akawa, Akashi, or Kageyama. But yeah, I'm so so happy to have this. So the next few items I want to show you guys are pre-orders that I recently got from Good Smile Company and CD Japan. So let's just open them up. So here we have is our long-awaited case um, holder for the Vanitas Nindoroid. So this was shipped out a little bit later than the Nindoroids that I got, even though they were released pretty much at the same time. But yeah, this is front and the back. So pretty. This is like basically an imitation of the Vanitas book that Vanitas carry. But yeah, and then this is just the inside of it has this like really cool detailing as well as two slots where you can put um, the nindoroids in. I don't know if this is actually something that you keep in the case, but if not, yeah, you can take it out as well. But yeah, very happy to have this and I want to display my nindoroids in a more like, I don't know, unique way instead of just having them on their like little base and just standing there so this would be a really nice way to kind of display them in a more unique way but very happy to have this here is the another box from good smile company so here is the last missing uniform haiku character i needed to get which is akashi so for Nindoroids, I'm only collecting Kageyama, Oikawa, and Akashi. So they finally did a re-release of Akashi very recently this year with Bokuto. So I did grab his, which is so nice. I'm so glad that they've been releasing all these Haikyuu items that I've been wanting. Um, I've been a big fan of the series for a while, but definitely missed out opportunities to buy the merch just because I wasn't aware of a lot of these back then. And so, yeah, this was perfect timing. And I think if I had to choose a pose, I would probably have him like do a serve or something like that. Cause most of my uniform ones are like doing action poses. And funny enough, it actually came with the bonus rubber strap. I thought this would be like the first press edition where they did come with rubber straps because the last few that I bought from re-release from Good Smile, they actually didn't come with any bonuses at all. So um, 
yeah, I'm not sure what's different this time around, but it's nice to have the rubber strap because it's really cute. I love rubber strap items and I like to hang them on my wall. So I'm really happy to have this, but I don't know why the other the other ones that were re-released didn't come with the rubber strap, or at least mine didn't. So anyways, that is Akashi and yeah, let's hop on to the next package. So here is a package I got from CD Japan. It's another pre-order I recently got. So I'm excited to show you guys what's in here. Here we have is our second Nindoroid doll. So I'm only collecting Nindoroid dolls for this series only, mainly because I am obsessed with Mr. Love Queen's Choice. So I did pick up Victor, which is like one of the love interests in the series, and I did assemble him last time in my haul. So yeah, here is Gavin, which is my favorite love interest in the game. He also is known as Bai Chi. But yeah, it is the If Time Flows Back version. I think this is such a great theme to the Nindoroid doll series. So yeah, we, his outfit is so, so handsome. And I love the quality of these Nindoroid dolls. They're definitely worth the price and they're really high quality. And I love how they're stand without having to like, they're like magnetic on the base. So it's really easy to like prop them up. But yeah, very, very happy to have this one. And I can't wait to assemble him as well. All right, so here are the Nindoroids all assemble. We have Akashi and his very cool action pose. I really like it a lot. It's so cute. I love putting action poses for my high cue figures because they just look so cool. So it looks like he's like hitting the ball. I don't know. It's really cool. And then of course we have this Oikawa, the most simplest. Nindora I have ever assembled. He's just holding this adorable dessert cake thing and yeah, it's so adorable and it took me like five minutes to assemble him. Like he was so easy. I never had an experience like that for an Android before and his base is so cute with the Seijo ball color logo. Anyways, and then here is the Nindoroid doll of Gavin or Baichi. I just love his cute little outfit. He's also holding this um, small little flower, which is so cute. This was the Nindoroid that had the most trouble for me in, in terms of assembling because there was this like, shoe part right here. And at first, I thought there was like a peg in there and I thought I had to take it out, but then it ended up you had to take his feet off and then put the shoes in so yeah i thought i could put the feet in the shoe but it was like take the feet and then put on the shoe it's kind of hard to explain but yeah i had a lot of trouble with that but regardless here are the little nindoroids all fully assembled i can't wait to display them in my room and yeah they look so cute and adorable Okay, so the last few packages are all going to be from Right Stuff Anime. They've been shipping out books like left and right. So I've been wanting to just do like a collective like manga haul from Right Stuff, but they ship things like, I don't know, every single week. So now I'm just gonna open the packages whenever they come. So this is the first out of three packages I got from Right Stuff. Some of them I feel like they could just consolidate and send them all together because I feel like it is a waste of like packaging if they send them all separately, but it is what it is. Here we have is volume one of Summertime Rendering, which is a very, very interesting time travel, time loop series. We follow a boy named Shinpei who currently lives in the city and goes back to his hometown after hearing that his friend had passed away. Um, there, when he returns back to his hometown, he realized that there are a few interesting mysteries that is currently happening and things may not seem to be what they are in his hometown. So yeah, this story has been super enjoyable. I finally finished the anime recently with my friend as we did a watch party for 25 weeks over the, for the series, which is really nice. They adapted the entire anime series, so I'm really excited to pick up the manga and eventually read this once I have all of the volumes. So that is summertime rendering. 
And the next book we have in this package is volume six of Nana. So yeah, I've been seeing a lot of reprints for Nana coming out. I think with this volume, I'm only missing four more volumes for the entire series, which is so nice because when I first started collecting the series back in 2020, it was out of stock and overpriced. <laughs> But here we are, we're getting a lot of the volumes back and we're almost done if you are a collector that started during the manga pandemic craze. So yep, very happy to have this. So basically Nana is about two women that share the same name Nana and they end up living in an apartment together due to some circumstances and it just follows their relationship with other people and them navigating navigating their life in their 20s so yeah really love the story a lot it is an emotional roller coaster um and yeah just very heartfelt and i love the relationship between the two nanas as well okay so here is the second package out of three packages that i got from right stuff uh hopefully you guys don't really hear too many background noises it's like sunday and my whole entire family is home um and so it's like really loud downstairs so hopefully you guys don't hear anything but if you do i apologize all right so here is the first volume in this little package and it is idol dream uh written by aria tamura i actually am working on collecting all of aria tamura's series because i'm a big fan of her art and i think most of her story is very enjoyable to a good extent and so yeah very excited to have this volume volume three so it just a little bit of background on idol stream it follows a woman named akari and she is this 31 editor office worker and her life is just not what the way she wants it to be she feels like she has a lot of regrets and missed opportunities that she wishes she had taken when she was younger anyway she goes to this high school reunion and she's just kind of sad how everything's at and then she bumps into her old friend tokyo who after having a conversation um ends up telling her about this pill that can turn you into your 15 year old self so akira ends up taking this pill and she transforms to her 15 year old self and um, as the titles, you can see she becomes an idol due to a very interesting circumstances. So, yep, that is Idol Stream. I like it a lot. It's kind of similar to another story called Real Life, but I would say a lot more dramatic, romance heavy, a little chaotic as well with some problematic situations here and there. But yeah, I think Real Life is like a slice of life, like... I don't know it's a little bit different however i real i do really enjoy the story a lot and i think it's very interesting anyways um yeah i did collect uh, all the volumes for this particular series so you'll see a lot of them over here so yeah this is volume seven so currently it's on a hiatus since volume seven came out it's been on like a two-year hiatus and yeah she like her last post about the series was back in early 2022 where she was like sketching a few scenes but yeah no status of it yet but arena did say that she is working on completing the series it's just not sure when but here we have another volume of a man and his cat volume seven and I've talked about a bit of his cat recently, but it is about a man and a cat um, meeting each other in the beginning of the series. He adopts, the man adopts the cat, and they've been through a lot in their life so far, losing loved ones, living some hardship. But now that they are together, they seek comfort with each other, and it's just a really cute and wholesome story, as well as really cool, like, there are moments of heartfelt as well as you kind of dig deeper to their past. So that is Man of His Cat. Let's see if I can pull out these other volumes somehow. I don't like the way Bright Stuff packaged this particular box. Okay, so we have volume 7 of Kakurio Bed and Breakfast for Spirits. So I would say this is like very like... It's like a fantasy romance series about a girl who can see like these demons and monsters anyways um her 
grandfather has like disappeared or passed away and she meets this demon who says that she is like collateral for her grandpa's death and so she is transported to the demon world and in order to pay off her debt she ends up opening a restaurant to feed all these demons and i really like this series i watched the anime a while back and yeah for the shoujo beat sales really inspired to just purchase this series so i really liked it the art is beautiful it gives me like kama sama kiss vibes when i watched it but i haven't read the manga yet so i thought i'd just give it a try and hopefully i'll like it as much as i liked watching the anime so that is that and that's another series i think will be popping up a few times so yeah i do have volume one as well but yeah i don't think a lot of people talk about this series um just because it's not very well known but i personally really liked it a lot um, mainly because I do like food-based animes. Next one we have is volume 15 of Queen's Quality. This one has just been recently released, so very, very nice to be able to continue reading this newest arc. Anyways, I love the cover. Kiyosuke Motomi's art is just beautiful. They look so cool. The back. But yeah, I'm... I have not really been understanding the current arc as of late, maybe because it's just going over my head, but I am very invested in the main character's relationship. Fumi and Kutaro's chemistry is just by far my favorite shoujo relationship of all time. It just has like the right amount of spice and communication, and they're just literally my favorite couple. Anyways, just a brief background on Queen's Quality. It's basically a group of people called sweepers and they are responsible for cleaning bugs and monsters that are infecting other people, causing them like different issues. It's kind of very vague the way I'm describing it, but I think the story is just representative of like mental health. Um, and yeah, this is a very cool concept. I really love story and highly recommend if you guys want to check out some supernatural action fantasy modern day romance story. Yeah, it really has everything and it's one of my favorite ongoing shoujo series. Next we have is volume 2 of Vampire Night. So yeah, currently working on completing my Vampire Night collection. Um, I definitely seen a lot of mixed reviews of this series, but yeah, I'm collecting the series more for nostalgic purposes since it is one of my very first like vampire stories I've read when I was younger. Um, but yeah, I love the art of this series. I do love vampires. I was in my vampire phase when I was in middle school, so this was one of them that contributed. But yeah, it's just basically about this girl. Her name is Yuki, and she attends this like academy that has vampires, and it's just a very convoluted romance drama series. And yeah, I'm just excited to continue collecting all these volumes and rereading it as an adult <laughs> once I get all of it. Okay, yeah, so we have another volume of Kakuryo Bed and Breakfast, volume 6, so we'll be seeing a lot of that. I wish, like, Right Stuff did, like, a better layout for this packaging because I just have volumes all over the place. So yeah, another volume of it as well, because I can't see which volume is which this way, but very cool. Okay, and we have another volume of Nana as well. 18 so yeah i'm not missing i am almost done with nana which is very nice okay so next we have is skip beat this is the latest volume that has come out volume 47 we have ren and kyoko on the cover i always look forward for another skip beat volume but anyways just a brief synopsis it follows a girl named kyoko who moves from the countryside to the city for her friend and she ends up taking care of him because he wants to join the entertainment industry however she finally realizes that her friend is actually taking advantage of her uses her and she gets really mad and swears revenge on him that she will be more popular than him when she joins the entertainment industry as well so yeah i love kyoko's development throughout the entire series as she becomes uh a professional actor and all of her relationships with all these characters is just so so cool and yes and my and look at Ren he's just so toned anyways that is the newest volume of Skip Beat okay 
Here we have is another Arima Tamura series called Time Stranger Kyoko. I actually haven't read this in a long time because it's only a three volume series. I think because it got axed along the way. It's supposed to be like some sort of like Fushugi Yugi type series. Um, anyways, it follows about this girl. She's like a princess, but doesn't want to be a princess. So she ends up like transporting herself to the modern day. Um, however, I think her father or someone gives her a mission to like collect these like 12 gods. And then yeah, she's she goes on a quest to collect that. So like she doesn't have to fulfill her princess role. I'm not sure if that's really the premise, but this is what I can remember from the top of my head. I might be wrong though. Anyways, just wanted to collect the series because I thought it was really pretty. And like I mentioned before, I'm trying to collect all of Arena Tamuro series. Um, and I do have like a soft spot for the series as well. So from what I remember. Anyways, yep, that is Time Stranger Kyoko. Next we have is a volume of Imakoi. We have the third volume here, just a sweet, wholesome uh, high school romance, not too many drama. Um, yeah, so it's about a girl, she gets, I think, sexually harassed on a train and she meets the main male lead, he ends up saving her and they get into like a relationship very, very fast, I would say. Um, I really love their chemistry a lot, I think volume two did stir some opinions but I think it gets resolved in volume three. It's also the same mangaka as Wolf Girl Black Prince that just got announced to have an English licensing winning which is very exciting because I actually really like Wolf Girl Black Prince. I know a lot of people don't really like it because of the anime but I really enjoyed the manga. Um, you know the first few Volumes are definitely really hard to read if you're just not comfortable with that type of relationship dynamic. However, I do think they improve as times go on. There's like 16 volumes in the series anyway, so um, the anime doesn't cover half of what the story is about. So yeah, very excited for that. Then we have, yeah, another volume of Kakurio Bed Breakfast. Yeah. There's only currently like seven volumes of this series so far, and I think an eight volume is coming out on pre-order soon, so that's exciting. Okay, next we have is volume 17 of Snow White with the Red Hair. Yeah, I'm very excited to have this next installment. And yep, really cool. Uh, so yeah, the story follows a girl named Shiryuki who has this really beautiful red hair, and she, during her home country, the prince falls in love with Shiryuki and um, wants to marry her. However, she obviously does not want to marry him at all. And so she runs away from her home country and ends up meeting Zen, uh, another neighboring prince and his gang, uh, Mitsuyara and Kiki. And they go on this really cool adventure and there's just so much going on in the latest few volumes, but that's the basic premise of the story in the beginning but yeah it's really cool one of my favorite adventure shoujos that i'm currently reading the next we have is volume four of kubo won't let me be invisible really cute um high school romantic comedy series we follow a boy named junta who is basically like this invisible guy in his classroom all his life no one really notices him and so He's basically non-existent. However, his seatmate Kubo has taken an interest of him ever since she has met him and so it's just, you know, her kind of interacting with him on a daily basis. They're also like seatmates so I love those type of stories when characters are like sitting next to each other. Um, and so yeah, I just really love the story. Really cute and I'm so excited for the anime adaption that's coming out very soon. But yeah, very wholesome series. Oh my god. And then this is Junta's little brother. Isn't he so adorable? This comes out, I think, on a weekly basis on the Young Jump magazine. But yeah, love it a lot. Currently just, I'm a sucker for these romantic comedies. And then last in this package is a brand new volume of Welcome to the Ballroom, number 11. Wow, I am... I have not read the manga for this series. I've only watched the anime. Um, 
but yeah, I've been really keen to start on the manga really soon. I definitely need to start it really soon. But I really enjoyed watching the anime. Uh, it was really cool seeing like ballroom dancing and the animation behind it. And I finally like the main characters and his relationship with other characters in the series. Just really cool, super developed. The main character is very likable, basically. It's about a story of the main character and he gets into ballroom dancing after seeing an older senpai enter her this like underground studio and he picks up the sport pretty well and I just love his relationship with all the partners he dances with and yeah how he just gets into the sports and the art of it so yeah that's welcome to the ballroom it's nice that we've got a new volume for the series because I know that the series particularly has like pretty slow releases so yeah that is everything in this box and let's hop on to the final box of from right stuff all right so here is the third package from right stuff i definitely feel like they could have consolidated all of these books but it is what it is i still really enjoy like getting all of these new releases so quickly and as usual, I'm not a big fan of books being stacked like this because I feel like I'm like repeating the same thing for each volume. So first we have is the Abandoned Empress uh, Korean Mon Ha series. I am very excited to read this volume because I have been reading this series on a volume by volume basis. And yeah, I do love their childhood arc as well but a lot of people have a lot of mixed feelings for this series but i for one like it it's fine i mean like the manga the manhwa itself is based on a light novel so whatever happens in the story has already been predetermined by the light novel so if you don't like this series then it it wasn't the artist's fault it's literally based on a like a korean light novel Anyways, it follows the main girl. She basically lived as this queen. However, the prince that she is like serving does not like her at all due to some misunderstanding. And so in her very first life, she ends up getting killed by him due to yeah, lots of misunderstanding, manipulation. Um, the prince treats or the king, the prince king treats her really really badly in her first life and so for her second life as she gets reincarnated for the second chance um she tries to avoid him at all costs but you know these type of stories they're very i would say kind of predictable in some sense and so yeah not everything is panning the way out that she wants it to be as her and the male lead is just very deeply connected with each other Anyways, that is volume 3 of The Abandoned Empress. And then here we have another Korean manhwa. This is Daughter of the Emperor. So I haven't read the series in a long time. So yes, I don't really remember too much about it. But it's basically about this girl and her father. They don't really have a great relationship with each other. But I think she gets reincarnated. And then so now she lives her, like as like a child and tries to be more i don't know close with her dad however i just i have mixed feelings about this series as well as because like i do think the reason why i haven't read this story in a while is because the childhood arc is going a little bit too long for my taste i'm okay with childhood arc but because they're so smart as a baby or like as a kid it's just hard to like bridge the gap that they're mentally older than they are so it always feels awkward when it's like over like overdue or too long or dragged out too long and I actually found out this story was actually completed like the Mon Hall edition because it's based on a light novel and I heard that it was actually axed <laughs> oh well but let's see if I will still continue reading this series. I don't even know if I'll collect this, but I'll just keep the two volumes that I have for now. But yeah, the, apparently the, the manhwa artist for this series has been working on this particular project for over seven years now. And 
yeah, the manhole is nowhere near done for where it stopped, but I guess it's just been losing a lot of popularity recently due to so many new Korean manhwas coming out every month, and so yeah, this just been left behind. However, I still think it's a pretty enjoyable series, it's just probably not worth collecting, at least for me personally. Next volume we have is, I was reincarnated as a villainess in an Otome game, but the boys love me anyway. And so, yeah, I finally got around reading this um, series, and this series actually is very interesting, but could have some problematic topics, um, mainly because there is a particular love interest that is a little bit older than the main character and so there's like this age gap situation going on but there's like so many other love interests in the series and so they're very obsessive with the main character let's just say that however i still really like the story a lot so basically it follows a girl i for her name but she finds out that she's been reincarnated as a villainess of a game that she plays and for the first two volumes it follows like her childhood setting of like how everything gets set up how she meets all the guys and i believe the third volume is more related to like her the current um current arc which is like them actually in school current age so yeah we got passed through the childhood arc which is really nice and i'm really excited to read like present day setting i w was surprised that this is actually based on a light novel series however the light novel is not picked up officially in english and so yeah we only have the manga how uh but the art is very pretty and yeah i'm really excited to read the third volume and the next volume we have is volume two of midnight secretary it's been a while since i got a new volume of midnight secretary it's a completed shoujo series uh about a secretary and this guy he is her boss but he's also a vampire so yeah it's a very spicy smutty vampire series one of the first ones i read along with vampire night it's been a while since we got a new volume and so i have hope that i can continue completing the series as well but yeah i definitely like the story a lot it's very short it's like only like six or seven volumes long and cannot wait to get the other volumes for that series as well so last but not least we have uh, ascendance of a bookworm light novel volume three part four uh i actually personally have not read this i've got this for a friend but yeah i just ordered this volume for him because i are i order so much anyways when it comes to write stuff so free shipping for them so that is everything that i got for this particular write stuff haul um yeah i hope you guys enjoy me rambling on all of the books and new series that i picked up and yeah let's head out to the outro now all right so here's an overview of everything that i unbox in today's video so many new things um that i was really excited to share and talk about and i cannot wait to put them in my shelves and in my collection so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed me talking about all of these new items and yeah take care i'll see you guys in my next video and until then bye